Today we're going to learn about LightFunnels Funnel Builder, the place where your craziest and most ambitious funnel ideas come to life. Let's get started. We'll start with an overview of what the Funnel Builder is and what it allows you to do. Then we'll cover some of the major funnel settings that you should be aware of. Then we'll talk about different funnel page types, like the product page, the checkout page, the thank you page. We'll cover managing funnel pages, adding pages, deleting pages, connecting pages. And then we'll cover split testing that allows you to split test different pages in order to determine which one converts best for you. So in order to access the funnel builder, you can either create a new funnel or access a funnel that you have already created. Let's go inside the demo funnel. So here we are in the funnel builder. The funnel builder allows you to create any kind of funnel that you want. Here you have the freedom to add new pages, drag and drop pages around, connect pages, delete pages, and so on. On the left sidebar, you have your funnel settings that we are going to cover in a bit. You have your funnel styles. These are styles that are applied to all the pages of your funnel so that your styles are congruent across every page. If you wanna learn more about funnel styles, check out our global funnel styles tutorial. Then you have generic pages. The generic pages are pages like your contact page, your privacy policy. These are pages that are secondary to the functioning of your funnel. You can edit your generic pages by just clicking the edit icon here. Down here you have the issues tab. So if you have some kind of issues in your funnel settings, you will be able to see them here in order to easily fix them. And then you have the help center and support here. On the top bar, we have the revert button that allows you to go back to the last saved version of your funnel. Duplicate funnel so that you can create a copy of this funnel. The preview button allows you to see how your funnel will look like. And then the save button and you have the option to publish or unpublish your funnel and to copy the funnel link. So this is the link you want to use on your ads and whenever you want to take your funnel publicly. Down here we have a time range for the analytics that you see on each page. So you can pick a time range to see relevant data. And then you have the zoom options here. So you can zoom out and zoom in, or you can just scroll your mouse to zoom out and zoom in. In here you can create new pages. All right, so let's go ahead and cover the funnel settings. The funnel name is used inside of your admin dashboard. The name will not be seen by your funnel visitors. It's only used by you, so you can recognize this funnel inside of your dashboard. The funnel URL allows you to define a URL for your funnel. So in this case, whenever I type my domain name slash demo funnel, I will land on this funnel, as you can see here. Let me just drag this down and you can see that this is my domain name and then I have slash demo funnel. In here, you can add your custom HTML, CSS and JavaScript that will be added to the head tag of every page on your funnel. The fav icon allows you to define a fav icon for your funnel. So let me go ahead and change the fav icon. And you will see that when I save and I click preview, you can see that the icon up here is the icon that I have just chosen. The language allows you to define the language of your funnel. So the language will not automatically translate all texts inside of your funnel. Instead, it will only translate the texts that you are not able to edit. For example, the error messages. Now let's give it a try. Let's go to the product page and see. So in here you have, for example, this select text that is inside of the dropdown. This text cannot be edited because it's inside of the dropdown. So for example, if you change the language to French and go back here, you will see that the text was translated. Also, if you pick a language that is written from right to left, for example, Arabic, you will see that the whole page layout is now written from right to left and that that text was also translated. Let's go back to the settings. Enable page recording allows you to record the activity of your visitors on your funnel. This allows you to watch them browsing your funnel in order to understand where they get stuck or if there is something to improve. In order to watch your recordings, go to your dashboard and then click apps and click open next to session recordings. If you are working in a local area and the phone numbers there have a very specific format, you can disable phone verification in order to avoid getting errors on your checkout page. Enable Google Analytics here will enable Google Analytics on all your funnel pages and it will use the integration that you have inside of your account settings tracking Google Analytics. You can learn more about our Google Analytics integration by clicking the link here. Down here, you can select the Facebook pixels that you want to use on your funnel. You can select one or multiple pixels that you want to use. And the same goes for Snapchat pixels and TikTok pixels. And lastly, in here, you can choose the payment method that you would like to accept in this funnel. The payment method will appear inside of the checkout page down here. If you want, you can click the payment methods link here to go to your account settings and connect more payment methods like Stripe, PayPal, Razorpay, and so on. All right, so those are the funnel settings. 
Let's talk about the different page types that you can have in your funnel. There are seven different page types that you can have. The article page allows you to warm up your traffic before they actually decide to buy your product. This is very useful if you are getting cold traffic, for example, from paid ads, where your visitors are going to learn about your product first before they go to the product page where they can purchase it. The squeeze page, also known as the lead capture page, is a page you can use to ask your visitors for their personal information, like the name, phone number and email. You will typically use this kind of page in a lead generation funnel. The product page is the page that presents your product with its images, its description, the features, testimonials, reviews. In here, the visitor will be able to pick a variant and proceed to the checkout page where they will be able to complete their purchase. You may notice that on some pages, like the product page, the squeeze page, article page, and upsell and so on, you have this product drop down. This allows light funnels to know which product is related to the page. This way, the page is automatically populated with the product's information. Once the visitor decides to buy your product, they will pick the variant and go to the checkout page. On the checkout page, they'll be able to fill their personal information and process the payment. Once the payment is done, they can go to the next step, which can either be a thank you page to finish the buying process, or it can also be an upsell page where you will present them with a second offer that they can add to their order. If they accept the upsell, they will be charged for the product and then they will go to the thank you page or to another upsell if you decide to have multiple upsells. If they decline, they can also go to the thank you page or they can also go to the downsell if you decide to have a downsell. So let's see how this looks inside of the funnel builder. So here we have the funnel that we were previously working on and I've just added uh, this downsell page and added the article and squeeze page. So um, let's try to use all of these pages to see what the flow will look like. So our visitors are going to land on the article page. Uh, once they decide to buy the product, we can send them to the lead capture page first. So uh, let's say for example, um, when they decide to buy the product, we ask them for their first name and email in order to add their email to our email list before sending them to the product page. So from the article page, they will go to the squeeze page. And then from the squeeze page, once they enter their name and email, they will go to the product page where they can pick a variant. And then they will go to the checkout page where they can buy. After buying the product, they will go to the upsell page where we offer them a second product. If they accept to buy the second product, they will go to the thank you page. And right now, if they decline and say, no thanks, I don't want this, this product, they will also go to the thank you page. What we can do here is also connect a downsell page like this. So when they say no, we give them a better offer. Like we can probably decrease the price or offer them a second product that is maybe less expensive and that they may accept. So if they accept it, they'll go to the thank you page and they will be charged for that product. If they don't accept it, they will not be charged and they will still go to the thank you page. Let's talk a little bit about managing pages inside of the funnel builder. Each page in the funnel builder has a name, a thumbnail, some analytics. Some page types have a product selector. Selecting a product here will allow you to automatically populate the page with product information. If you want to learn more about how this works, check out the data binding tutorial. Then you have the links. Each link that you have on the page, for example, this button right here, will appear on the funnel builder as a link. This link can be dragged anywhere to be connected to other pages, or if you release it on an empty area, you can connect it to a different page. So for example, this button right here will take to the second checkout while the other button will take to the original checkout. So let's delete this checkout in here and connect this link back to the original checkout. And then you have options down here. In here you have the page settings. If you want to learn more about page settings, check out the introduction to the page builder tutorial. You can click the edit button to go to the page builder, or you can also click the thumbnail to go to the page builder. You can preview the page on your browser and you can duplicate the page. To duplicate the page, you have two options. Duplicating the page right here, so you just click that and a copy of the page will be created right here. Or you can also copy the page. This will allow you to paste the page wherever you want. So for example, in here, I can use Command V. You can also use Control V if you are on Windows. And this will paste the page in here. But this second option is also very useful if you want to copy this page to another funnel. So you just copy it here, you go to the other funnel, and then you use Control V or Command V. Let's now talk about split testing. Say for example, we have this funnel and we want to create a split test of the product page. So in order to do that, we need to create a copy of the product page. So let's do that right now, duplicate this page. And let's for example, say that we want uh, to test a different buy button. Okay, so we want this buy button to be larger. So let's increase the text size 
and maybe we want it to say just buy now buy now and we also want to change the background color of the button to be orange so say for example we have this product page right here with a an orange buy button and the first one with the purple buy button now what we want to do is connect these pages to a split test so that we can have a clear idea of which one of these two pages is actually performing better so to do that we click the plus button here and we choose a split test node. We'll place the split test node here and we'll connect the first variation to the first product page and the second variation to the second product page. Now the first step of the funnel is going to be the split test. All right. In here, we have several options. We have the option to add more variations if we want. That's not what we're going to do here. We also have the option to select the traffic weight. So for example, uh, we want this first page to get 80% of the traffic and the second page to get 20% of the traffic. Now, this is an ideal setup if we're already seeing good results with this first page. So we don't want to break that. We just want to use 20% of the traffic and funnel that through the second page in order to check the, the performance of this new variation. We also have the option to automatically choose the winner after a number of visits. So for example, after 1000 visit, the losing variation will automatically be turned off. And that's our overview of LightFunnels Funnel Builder. I hope this video was helpful to you and I will talk to you soon.